Chapter 193 Part 4 of 5 I ended up at the gala. The other me was standing with King Bloodbeak and Princess Gilda out on a balcony. This is when Blue Blood stabbed me, I said. It is, my guide said. Fun stuff. Do we have any memories associated with this one? Yes. I finally looked around for any of the emotions, but I didn't see any. You will have to find them. Are you kidding me? Your actions in this party had many consequences all over the place. Having to explore to find them. I disagree, but I guess there isn't much of a choice. So how does this work? I ask. The party will pause at intervals. You will find various ponies in color. Find and approach them to gain insight. Once you have found one, the party will continue around the ponies in color. You can either follow them to see what they did or wait until the party freezes to find another target. Cool, I guess. I'm not sure I actually want to see myself getting stabbed, but it'll be fun to watch Taya smoke that clown. So let's get started. Everything around me went grey except for the princess. Navarone isn't what I expected. My father said the humans had strange customs and interesting cultures, but he seemed to think they were warriors. This is no brute before me, no mindless fighter or uncultured barbarian. His ties to Ikestria and the princesses are concerning, yet I feel he has no true loyalty to them. Ah, she actually didn't hate me from the start. It's interesting that he's given me so many choices. Most male griffins would have taken the lead by now, trying to force me into things they think I'd enjoy. The fact that Nav asked what I wanted, and if I was even interested in a date, feels surprisingly good. And to so freely offer such knowledge. A part of me suspects a trap, but he seems completely sincere. Either he can lie like a caribou or he's the most valuable ally I've ever found. I guess time will tell. I guess she has decent sense motive checks. I've always done my best to be honest with her. Something actually occurred to me, then. Wait, this was before I told her about my idea. There are many here to whom you are close, my guide said. You would not be able to find them all every time the party pauses. You will hear the thoughts each has about the night as a whole, and about the progression in which they have them. Despite being unwed, he seems to have no interest in marriage. Should this scheme of his pan out well, I will have to push him on why. Marrying outside of my species would be the perfect way to explain not having children. Given his reputation, he would likely sleep around and not expect much, intercourse from me. I take offense to that. I guess it's a reasonable consequence for my actions, though, so I can't complain too much. He certainly has no shortage of powerful friends. Fancy Pants and his awful wife, the princesses, the dragon, my father. I'm beginning to see why. Something about him just draws you in. It will be interesting to see how he lives in his day-to-day -day life, I suppose. Spending a few weeks away from the palace will be good, too. Nav seems to have a centering, head-clearing effect. If the information he promised is legitimate, he'll be a very useful friend indeed. Man, she was already feeling the pull. That's awful. And so my newfound ally was almost murdered in front of me while I found myself unable to even make a sound. It is no place for a princess to risk her life for anyone, yet I could have tried to pull him away or yell a warning or, anything other than stand and watch. His daughter's scream will haunt my dreams. I know that. And my eyes are still sore from the pure lightning she shot him with. Hmm. Perhaps my time spent in Nav's home can be spent aiding his recovery as well. That might make up for doing nothing. And then she proceeded to be annoying as hell for the next several weeks, I said. But I guess the company was nice. The princess lost her color and the king gained his. It's disappointing that Nav wasn't more interested but I'm honestly not surprised. The princesses have him so paranoid he wouldn't know a kind offer from a possible knife in the back. I have a feeling he would be a good match for my daughter. Maybe settling down would help her focus on her duties. 
and maybe settling down outside of Ekestria will help put his mind at ease. Despite everything, I'm surprised that he was sincere, I said. I expected at least a part of him was hoping to get me on his side. That talk with Luna was, enlightening. And disturbing. I feel like Celestia made a mistake, allowing that monster to take any power this early. And if she keeps her access to Nav's abilities and knowledge, I fear for all the world, not just my griffins. If they ever convince him that their goals supersede all others, their combined abilities might be the death of us all. There was a time I thought it would end with that, I said. When they made me immortal, I knew there was a reason. They were turning me into a better tool. This pony food is surprisingly good. I can't help but wonder what Celestia did this year. She certainly didn't bother to bring out any meat, despite now having three predator races as visitors. I'm also curious where the great white mare herself is. Normally she'll make a point to at least pretend to be polite to me, but I haven't seen hide nor tail of her this year. Maybe I'll actually have fun at this party for once. Celestia was a little preoccupied with Fleur, I said. Another thing I regret, but it seemed like a fun move at the time. Reginald is a very interesting dragon. I've heard the legends about the knight riding on wings of fire, but never understood what they meant. I can't say I'm surprised Luna's reason for sending Nav into the forest was to find her old weapon. I'd certainly like to have a few dragons of my own on my side. Nav seems to have a surprising amount of contacts and I've heard reports he's slept with dragons before. Perhaps he could assist. Wait, is that actually why Luna sent me in? I ask. She never really explained why, other than wanting it explored. And so my dear friend Navarone pays the price for Celestia's lax security. At least he's still alive, even if only barely. I certainly can't say the same for Blue Blood. I knew he was cruel, but I never expected him to fall so far. My poor Gilda seemed traumatized by the affair, even offering to help him recover. It's hardly the place of a princess, but, maybe something will come of it. It's quite easy to fall for your caretaker, after all. Alas, it wasn't to be, I said. I honestly don't think Gilda's the best choice. You think, my guide sarcastically replied. Yeah, I sighed. She's a little on the young and immature side. Which is a shame, because she's really fun to have sex with. But then, so are my other paramours. With that, the party came back alive. Everybody regained their colors and started talking. At the moment, Bloodbeak was introducing me to Gilda. I didn't really want to stick around for the whole thing, but I knew Luna appeared right before Gilda and I left. I kinda wanted to hear how her night had been, along with the conversation she apparently had with the king. So I sat through my introduction and realized quickly that I had been kinda rude. It was a little late to correct that mistake, so I just shrugged and continued waiting. Thankfully, it didn't take long for Luna to appear from the shadows like the creep she is. This was after I was completely done with her, so it didn't take long for the other me to leave with Gilda. Luna watched us depart with barely repressed rage in her eyes. I heard about your victory in the yearly war games, Bloodbeak said. I'm quite impressed, Princess Luna. Her eyes turned back to the king, all signs of rage gone. A leader is only as powerful as the ones she leads. Be impressed with Navarone and Captain Midnight Blossom. They seized victory from shining armor with ease. You speak as though it was a foregone conclusion, Bloodbeak said, lifting an eyebrow. Do you doubt Shining Armor's capabilities? Shining Armor is powerful in magic. Navarone can block all magic. With his only strength neutralized, Shining Armor is worthless. Then it seems that Nav is a powerful asset. He's certainly quite effective when used to illegally imprison Griffin nobles. He's quite effective when used anywhere, Luna said. I had plans for him tonight. Plans that didn't involve wasting his time on a griffin. Time spent on the heart is not time wasted, Bloodbeak said. Perhaps you should spend the party working on your own. It is a party, after all. 
didn't you have a fantastic date a few years ago? He tore my heart asunder and is now dating others openly. My heart has become a barren wasteland. No amount of work will make anything grow. Some of the Griffin soldiers shared looks, but the king didn't seem overly impressed. How fares Hestra, now that he has been legally imprisoned? He's angry. But I gave him a cell right next to my cousin, so at least he has someone to talk to. There are many who are upset that Nav escaped punishment. Trust me, he always finds a way. There were considerably more who were upset you escaped punishment. Hestra sent an assassin to attack a princess of Ekestria. I wasn't going to allow anything to stop him from coming to justice. Given that this princess is one of Navarone's close friends, he felt the same. If you expect either of us to apologize for it, you are mistaken. I had a feeling Celestia wasn't the one who gave the order. You took Hestra without asking, didn't you? We sent Navarone as a spy to determine guilt. Once we had the evidence we needed, I saw no need to bother my sister with the matter and just took him myself. Apparently things have changed in my absence and that was a violation of protocol. And national sovereignty, the king said. And a treaty or two. I had several advisors demanding war. I assume you fired them. My sister's advisors know better than to demand. Their role is to advise. Griffin ways are different. Thankfully, a quick discussion with Celestia revealed that war wouldn't be necessary. She's quite inventive, isn't she? Promising my knight's hoof in marriage was quite the overstep, though. He should be mine, to do with as I please and marry off as I please. That made me snort. Nice save, psychopath. Actions have consequences, princess. It seems you lost access to him through the fault of your own. The look on Luna's face made sticking around worth it. The king probably had no idea what kind of can of worms he was opening, but the pure rage that instantly came to her face actually made his eyes widen. That griffin may have his eye for now, but he will find his way back to his princess soon, one way or another. With that, her wings flared and everything but her went grey. I cannot believe that Harlot came to this party with another date. He's lucky I don't have him flayed alive. Or perhaps I should start with that little upstart Griffin hussy. Hmm. Yes, I'll make him watch. Perhaps that will help show the depth of my love. Wow. And so the list of those who need to die continues growing and growing. I believe I can think of a few easy potions that'll put blood beak down and make it look natural. And I know just who to contact to have his little brat taken care of. Let's have one of Nav's old paramours murder his new, shall we? With luck, her oldest brother will better know his place. Or perhaps it would be better if he didn't. I bet another conquest would cheer me up, and give me a chance to get closer to the world's best knight. Wow. That confirms who sent caught after Princess Gilda, my guide said. As always. Reginald tries his hardest to be a calming figure. It's strange. One would think the dragon would be more hot-headed than the pony, yet it seems his words seek to calm me more than rile me. In this, though. In this, his words inadvertently strike a blow. Hmm. I still can't believe Nav just happened upon him. I didn't even know he was in the forest. Maybe I should arrange a hunting trip for the three of us. Reginald can help convince Nav that everything was just a huge misunderstanding. Would she notice if I tried strangling her? I ask. You would be unable, my guide replied, patting me on the shoulder. Where is my blasted sister? Having to listen to this mare blather on about love and heartbreak is driving me crazy. And what's wrong with her husband? He's just, staring and giggling. I don't understand why Celestia let these two play at royalty. Cadence and Shining Armor are both worthless. I don't know how Nav can stand to live with her. Ugh, I should just go find him and order him to dance with me. That will cheer me up. I really don't want to follow Luna around all night, but I want to see Reginald, Cadence, and Shiny. Do I really have to keep hearing her crazy bullshit? Shining Armor has failed for the last time. 
he has allowed my beloved to be attacked in what should have been the most secure place in Canterlot. Celestia may not allow me to take away his titles or his power, but from this day forward, my vampire protege will be in complete control of the guard. Navarone will be safe. She will see to it or she will find herself staked. And while she sees to things, I can visit Nav all I want while he recovers. With luck, I can convince Celestia to bring him to my wing in the palace so I can make sure he's taken care of properly. Well, I'm happy about her effectively relieving Shiny of his duties and putting Blossom in charge. Not so happy about the rest, though. Everything came back to life and Luna shot straight into the air. From the sound of the memories, she was going to Reginald while Bloodbeak was going to get food. Finding my second favorite dragon was more important than watching an old man get high, so I took off after Luna. Thankfully, my shitty wings actually worked in the memory realm and I was able to follow with no problem. She actually stopped about 50 meters away, hovering in the darkness. Gilda and I were just now walking away and she was taking a moment to glare at us, as if personally affronted by the fact that we were happy. Once we got inside, she started flying over to Reginald. As soon as she landed, everything but Reggie went grey. Does Celestia really think her spies aren't noticeable? I don't even know why she's bothering. There are precisely three people at this party interesting enough to talk to and they're probably the only three who would dare to speak to me in the first place. I think Celestia changed in our absence. It seems to be for the worse. I think I would have liked meeting both sisters about four or five thousand years ago, I said. That would have been more fun, I think. Humans are interesting. Very, very interesting. I wonder if I should tell Luna about the forerunners the Minotaurs are so crazy about, and about how closely they match Nav. If she knew she had an ancient in her hooves, there's no telling what she might do. It seems that Nav may have figured it out at this point, but I can't quite be sure. Despite his size, I can see many uses for him. The chaos magic swirls so deeply around him that he's bound to cause great change wherever he goes. Add that to the perspective of an ancient end. Well, I think we're about to live through some interesting times. That motherfucker knew. He knew from the beginning. That son of a bitch. Something is troubling Luna. That's, unusual. The angst is common, the depression is normal, but, she's on edge. It involves Navarone, which can't be good. Getting between Luna and a subordinate isn't wise, but... Hmm. I will watch and see where this goes. If anyone asks that I get involved, perhaps I shall. And yet again he proves himself a coward, I said, shaking my head. Or considerably more patient, my guide said. His mind works very differently than yours. The young King Bloodbeak is an interesting character. It's interesting to see how Nav and Celestia both affected him. Although if I had to guess, I would say Celestia has affected him considerably more than he knows. It's a shame his brief flicker is almost at an end. I wouldn't mind a few more conversations. Alas, such is the gift of mortality. What the hell do you mean, gift? I'm relatively confident that dying isn't all it's cracked up to be. And so Navarone was stabbed in the one place where he should have been the safest. Quite an interesting development. Celestia will have a difficult time fixing the wrens I left in the ground when I heard. Nav is swirling with chaos magic. He mentioned Discord earlier. Now he was attacked by a crazed pony using chaos magic. I am too old to believe in coincidences. Discord must be free. If that is the case, then Nav is likely one of his pawns. I can't help but wonder if he knows. That's it, I'm done with this asshole, I said. I'm with Mooney, he's a bitch. What would telling you have accomplished, my guide ask? You already had Flo in you, so you couldn't have killed yourself. All it would have done is make Celestia and Luna wary, assuming they didn't outright attack you. I don't care. If he suspected, he should have told me. Hell, even the fact that I'm swirling with chaos magic is something I kinda shoulda known about. 
I don't know how he noticed but nobody else did, or if nobody thought it was worth mentioning. Perhaps you should ask the next time you see him. I don't think he would tell me. Not at this point. The dream finally came back into focus and Luna walked over to Reggie. I'm happy you accepted my invitation, she said. I had a feeling it would drive your sister crazy, so I knew I had to make it. She sent a few eyes to watch me. Then let us leave them behind. Her wings spread and she flew up to his back. He started walking toward the maze, so I flew up and slid onto Luna's back. How goes your night so far? Decently well. You just missed Nav. I was speaking to him and his adorable little date. I had a feeling he would prefer predators to prey. I couldn't see Luna's face, but it was probably pretty downcast at the moment. I, would not be surprised, unfortunately. I'm glad he's happy. It sounds like he's been through some unpleasant things. I feel he would be happier with another, yet he, disagrees. You can't interfere with the heart, Luna. How it beats is how it beats. I am aware, she coldly replied. Is something the matter, he slowly asked. Many things are amiss, Reginald. I am glad to have one friend I know I can count on. What ails your mind, little Luna, he asked. Given his size, they were already past the labyrinth. Ponies almost never venture that far out during the gala, so they were unlikely to run into anyone. I would rather not speak on it yet. My heart and head are both troubled. I am trying to, come to terms with things. You were away from the world for a long time, Reginald said. It's understandable that you are having difficulties. You will have an easier time if you voice them. That, I can guarantee. Perhaps another time. This is a party, supposedly. We are to be jovial, and all that. Then secluding ourselves away isn't the wisest of ideas, is it? To be honest, there are very few I pull any sense of comfort or closeness from. Most of the ponies are just, faces. They're barely worth remembering. This entire party seems like a, farce. Ponies here are so mindlessly comfortable that they're all almost entirely identical. No hardship means no growth. No growth means no personality. No change. No advancement. The entire country looks almost the exact same as when I left, Reginald. Celestia has done nothing in my absence but sit on her throne and let her empire go to waste around her. It's very difficult to do much more than maintain your throne when the one who put you there and kept you there was lost to you. Now that you have returned, will you go back to building the empire? No. Celestia won't have it. Apparently now we are to tolerate the lesser races rather than eradicate them. It seems difficult to inspire national unity without an outward enemy, but nothing has collapsed just yet. I think that's a good thing. My musings over the last few thousand years have turned me away from wholesale slaughter. It makes my blood sing, but it seems so, wasteful. Luna sighed and looked up at the moon, almost slapping me in the face with her horn. It has been so long since fire truly raged in my veins. I know battle would give me the clarity of mind I seek, yet there is none to be had in this peaceful world in which I am now trapped. I would offer to spar, but I think that might draw your sister from hiding. She would certainly be upset if we knocked her ugly capital off the mountain. I'm sure your puppy dog eyes would calm her mind. With luck, we could pin the blame on Nav. He'll find some way to get out of any punishment for it anyway. I shudder to think how a virile young predator could earn the forgiveness of a lonely old princess. It's exactly as disgusting as you imagine, I'm afraid. She lords it over me and, and prances about when he's done, like it's something to be proud of. Oh ho! I was joking, but it seems the big princess herself is at least part mortal. I'm somewhat surprised you haven't used his services. Two. I. I believe I would like to, get some punch. Her horn lit up and she vanished, leaving me to fall onto Reggie's uncomfortably hard back. Interesting. Very, very interesting, the dragon slowly rumbled. 
I didn't really care about what he and Bloodbeak talked about, so I flew off his back and went over to the party. I didn't see anybody at all until I got into where all the food was laid out. It took me a few seconds to pick Cadence out in the crowd. A part of that is because most of the ponies in the crowd were incredibly high at the moment and they were all being funny. When I finally spotted her, everything else went grey. Despite everything, a part of me is nervous about this. I really shouldn't let Nav drug every pony, but I mean, it's the gala. Celestia goes out of her way to ruin it every few years anyway. I might as well let Nav have a turn. That's only fair, right? Especially given what she's apparently done to him. Maybe it'll actually put a rare smile on his face. I figured she would have found shining armor by now. So it seems Navi actually found a date. I don't recognize her off hoof, but she's likely high ranking if she's here. I don't think a griffin's the best choice for him, but what's a knight? If I try meddling this early, he'll probably just thump me on the nose. I'll make sure to ask him all the important questions later. I have to make sure whoever he picks is just right. While I appreciate the thought, it honestly sounds creepy when she says it like that. Well, it's obvious now which servants graze at the food when no ponies looking. Not that I can blame them, of course. At least every pony's still having a good time, even if they might be a little, impaired. Maybe we should do this every year. Celestia wouldn't have to sabotage it if it's actually fun. I really want to try it myself, but I'd feel bad if there wasn't any pony sober keeping an eye on things. That's actually a pretty good point. I wonder if Celestia would let me do it this year. Don't you own her, my guide asked. No. I set things up specifically so I wouldn't own her. That way, I can blame anything bad that happens on her and flow. End of part 4